Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing my top 10 favorite products from Chanel. These are my makeup must-haves from the brand. If you are just getting into Chanel, this is where I would start. And if you are a longtime lover of Chanel and you don't have these products, they are worth looking into. I've done this video in the past, but this time around, I wanted to do something different. So instead, I'm getting ready for the day while using all of my favorite products. So this right here is the finished result. It is a full face of best of the brand. But I wanted to make sure you could see these products in action while I talk about all of the reasons why I love them so much. So let's get started. The first must-have product is the LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops Liquid Illuminator. And I would also include the Le Beige Highlighting Fluid, both Sunkissed and Pearly Glow. I currently have Pearly Glow, and I've owned the original Sunkissed back when it was the Soleil Tan de Chanel Illuminating Fluid. I really like all of them. I just went with Rosy Light Drops today because I think... If I had to choose, this is probably my favorite. You can use this in so many different ways. Today, I will be using this as a primer, but you can also mix it into your foundation. One of my favorite hacks is to mix it into my concealer. That way you have a little extra glow right underneath the eyes. It creates that perfect luminous complexion, that lit from within radiance that everybody is trying to achieve without adding grease or oil to the skin. So if you are really dry, you will love this. If you have very oily skin, you will still really like this. You can mix it into a matte foundation. That way you have oil control, but you still have a little glow. You're not flat, matte. Your foundation doesn't look dry. It makes your skin look really healthy. Now, the rosy light drops are a little bit lighter, so I like to start in the center points of the face and blend out. I don't like to cover my entire face with this. The formula is pretty thin, so it shears out nicely. It doesn't feel thick, heavy, or sticky on the face. It's almost as if you have nothing on at all, but it leaves your skin with the most beautiful, very subtle iridescent glow. I would say this is one of the best Chanel products, but it's also one of the best liquid illuminators money can buy because of the texture. It's just so perfect. I tried the Rare Beauty liquid illuminator whenever that launched, and it was kind of terrible, and I compared it side by side with this, it was night and day difference. The Chanel looked so much prettier on the skin. Not only did it give a prettier glow, but it also just looked more natural on the face. Other liquid illuminators, especially if they're really thick, they can look like paint, and then it's just too thick, too gloopy, and sometimes if it has too much shimmer, it ends up looking dull or strange, almost grayish on the face. Not the Chanel. You can never go wrong with these liquid illuminators. You've probably noticed, as I mentioned, it does leave a pale cast to the skin, so it's time now to go in with foundation. And this is my second makeup must-have. It's the Le Beige Healthy Glow Foundation for Hydration and Long Wear. If I had to choose my favorite Chanel foundation, I'm still kind of teetering on the fence between two, but I really like this new Le Beige. It would be between this and the Sublimage. If you don't necessarily need that anti-aging skincare, if you don't want to pay the crazy price tag, the Le Beige foundation is a great option. It evens out your complexion totally. Even though I would say this is a medium buildable coverage foundation, it's not heavy, heavy full. You can build it up in the places where you need a little bit more coverage. You could also shear this out very easily if you want something that's a little bit lighter. It has more of a natural finish. It is hydrating, but it's not overly greasy or oily. I still have combination skin, so if this was too dewy, too luminous, too hydrating, it would be a total disaster for me. And it is long wearing. It never feels like it has dried down on the skin. A lot of long wear foundations, once they dry, it's almost as if you have a mask of foundation and if you accidentally rub your nose or touch your face, you can see where it just whoosh, wipes right off in those particular areas and everything else is just like sealed on the skin. That's not the case with this. It maintains a bit of softness, a pliability, which I really enjoy. My Chanel shade is B30, and I'm going to apply this the same way I did the liquid illuminator. Start in the center of the face, blend outward, stipple, and build it up in any areas where I need a little bit more coverage. This is the finished face. It took about a pump and a half to cover the entire face, and it just glides seamlessly on the skin. And then I did go back with the excess product left on the brush, and I stippled my cheeks just to build it up a tiny bit. You could absolutely skip that step. Moving right along, my third makeup must-have is the corrector from Chanel. 
I currently only have this rose corrector, which works fine. You can use this as a substitute for your concealer, or you can mix it into your concealer. You can also layer this underneath your foundation if you just want to color correct. So this is one of the three correctors. They also have an apricot and a green. But I really love the original correctors that come in skin tones as well. I always use 10 beige. It's not incredibly light. This is a bit lighter than the 10 beige, so it gives me a little extra brightness, which I prefer. The formula of these is amazing. It's creamy enough, but it's dry enough. I never have an issue with creasing. I feel like it sets perfectly on the face. It's not full, full, full coverage, but it's also not incredibly light and sheer either. It hits that sweet spot right in the middle, which makes this the perfect concealer for, I would say, the majority of people out there are looking for something just like this. Makeup must have number four is the Luminously Beige Powder from Chanel, and I like all of them. I've used the Light Luminously Beige as a setting powder. It's beautiful. I've used the Medium Deep and the Deep Powder as a bronzer. This is the Le Beige Sunset Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder that came out, was it last year or two years ago? It's basically the same thing. It's the Luminous Le Beige. I love the texture and I like the fact that it's slightly luminous but not too much. So it is going to give you a slight sheen to the skin. It's so subtle which makes it the perfect setting powder or bronzer because you're not going to have too much luminosity and you can dust it all over. You can touch up throughout the day. You can layer product if you want to and you don't have to worry about it looking funny on the skin. So today I'm warming up my skin using this sunset bronzer and as soon as I run out of this, I will replace it with the Luminous Lay Beige. My next favorite item from Chanel is their blushes. I think they have some of the prettiest blushes out there and it's so hard to narrow them down. Today I chose Quintessence because I do think this is one of the most universally flattering shades, but there are so many classics. Rose Bronze, Rose Patel, In Love. I could go on and on about the Chanel blushes. I just love them, I have so many of them, but if I had to choose one favorite blush from Chanel, it would be Quintessence, so that's what I'm going to apply today. I have two favorite highlighters from Chanel at the moment. The Fleur de Printemps that came out this spring is limited edition, but it is still available. With a lot of the limited pieces like this from Chanel, they tend to stick around for a while, at least online. I had to include it on the list even though it's not in line because it's just so beautiful. If you can get your hands on this, it's stunning. If these colors work for you, if this is the type of shade that you're typically drawn to, go ahead and pick it up. You won't regret it. This is one of my favorite purchases of the year makeup wise. I love the blush. I wanted to incorporate one of the other blushes today, but I am going to use this highlight. Another Chanel highlighter that I love is the Balm Essential. This was a slow burner for me because originally when this first launched, I thought it was okay. I wouldn't have considered this to be one of my favorite products from Chanel, but the more they've launched and the more I've purchased, They've kind of grown on me. I love the rosé, but I couldn't find it in the drawer just now, so I pulled out Golden Light, which is also really beautiful. This has significant color to it, so it's a great highlight for that glass skin, glowy, dewy complexion if you have a deeper skin tone. But I can use this on my shoulders, my neck, chest, decollete, whenever I have sunless tan to give me a little extra glow to the skin. If I were to tap this on my cheeks right now, it would give me a little bit too much color. My eyes are now almost complete. I filled in my eyebrows. I did top liquid eyeliner, mascara. There are several mascaras from Chanel that I really love. 
I don't know if I would consider that to be a best of the brand product anymore. Not if I had to narrow down the list to 10. In the past, I've named La Volume. It's classic. It's a great volumizing mascara. I really like the Inimitable Intense Mascara. I think that one is really great as well. So the mascaras from Chanel are great. They're notable, worth purchasing, absolutely. If I had to choose a top 10 list, they get chopped off the list. For brow products, Chanel has never been strong. I know I've said it before. I love my current brow routine. It's not something that I would go out of my way to purchase from the brand. There are several other brands that are much better and less expensive. And then liquid eyeliner, they have some great liquid liners. I'm currently using the double-sided Tom Ford, the eye defining pen. I really love this one. It's hard to beat because it lasts forever. I've been using this for what feels like probably close to six months and it's not even running low, not even a little bit. When it does begin to run low, I'll replace it because it's such a great value. It's a huge eyeliner. Another type of eyeliner that I love from Chanel is the Stilo Yo Waterproof. This is the long lasting eyeliner. I like to use this in the waterline. Now this makes the list. This is one of my top 10 beauty must have products from the brand. I just love them. I think they have an incredible shade range. So I've gone through a full tube of this Brun Agape. This is my replacement. I went ahead and opened it up. And I always like to pop a little something something in the waterline. I don't like to wear black. I like to stick with brown. It's a little bit softer. And this Brun Agape has a little bit of shimmer. You can't really tell that it's shimmery because it's such a small surface area, but it does help it reflect light and it looks a little bit lighter than even brown. It's long wearing, it doesn't irritate the eyes. You can use this directly in the waterline, but you could also use it outside, right above the lash line if you wanted to, and you could smudge it out, make it really nice and soft. The last three makeup must-haves are all lip products. Here I have the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu Longwear Lipstick, of course. I think this has been on every Best of Chanel list I have ever made. I've only made two prior to this one, but it made both of those lists. I talk about these all the time, so I'm not going to apply this one, I'm going to apply the other lipstick. This is Timeless Beige. I keep it in my bag, I wear it constantly. If ever I'm going out for a special occasion, if I'm just running errands, going to brunch, it doesn't matter, night or day, this is such a easy go-to lipstick. I think it is just the most flattering nude. So I love this shade in particular. I also really like Endless Pink. <sighs> so many shades. It is so hard to beat because it is incredibly long wearing. It's really comfortable. I find it to be comfortable. I have heard complaints from other people that say it's drying, but if you find this drying, I think you are going to struggle with the majority of liquid lipsticks. That's one of my complaints about liquid lipsticks, matte lipsticks. They look really nice at first, but they are so uncomfy throughout the day. I always end up having to throw a gloss on top or just taking it off and applying a different lipstick. This is the most comfortable liquid lipstick formula I've ever tried, and it helps that you have the gloss on top. So you can't just get away with using the pigment. You have to top it off with the gloss, and then after a while, maybe 20 minutes, it's not very glossy, but it just helps to moisturize the lips. It keeps it really comfortable. Now, here is the new addition to the list, the Rouge Coco Bloom Lipstick. It is one of the best products from Chanel now. I think it is even better than the Rouge Coco Flash, the Rouge Coco, and the Rouge Allure, and the Rouge Allure Lac, and the Ink. It's amazing. I love it because it looks really nice on the lips. I said this in my review, it almost looks like a filter. It kind of fills in any cracks, any fine lines, even if you apply this directly on parched lips, really dry lips. It it moisturizes the lip, but it also looks really smooth. So I love that about this formula. It is pretty long wearing, you know, it's still a bullet lipstick, so there are limita limitations. It's not quite as long wearing as the liquid, but for a bullet lipstick, yes, it is long wearing and it is so comfortable to wear. It feels like butter. And out of all of the Chanel lipsticks, I think this one feels the most substantial. I like a lipstick to hug my lips. I, I wanna feel my lipstick. I know some people don't, but if you love the Tom Ford formula, Hourglass is another one that comes to mind. Something that feels like it is going to last the long haul. You will love the Rouge Coco Bloom. Now the shade range leaves much to be desired because it is so 
bold and intense. They're very pigmented, so it's a lot of pinks and reds, and they end up looking pretty deep and dark on the lips. Even shades that you don't expect to look deep look kind of deep. I think this is the lightest shade, 110 Chance, and you'll see when I apply this, it's not a very pale nude, which is fine. This is the ideal nude for me, but I think some people might be left feeling like they're, they're missing some shades. I love this color. But it's not light, and it's the lightest shade available. Not only are they long wearing and really intense with their pigment, they're hydrating and they're shiny. So I don't necessarily need to add a gloss, but that completes the list of my favorite products from Chanel. The Rouge Coco Gloss is kind of iconic. It's one of those products that is an entryway into the glamorous world of Chanel Beauty because it is the probably the lowest price point. It's a little bit more attainable than, say, the Sublimage Foundation. So I think this gives more people access to the brand and it's just that little piece of luxury. But not only that, I love this wand. This wand hugs your lips. It feels so nice. The formula is incredible. The shade range, beautiful. Am I still sad that they got rid of some of the classic Glossomers? Yes, of course. <laughs> but. I can't complain about these either. This happens to be one of my favorite shades. This is Burnt Sugar, 724. It looks deep, but it's not. It goes on pretty sheer. The lip glosses from Chanel aren't pigmented pigmented, which is better, I think. As you can see, it's not really changing the color much. Adds a little extra shine and a little sheen, but that's about it. You can throw this over a red, you can throw this over a nude. It's kind of the multi-purpose lip gloss, which is why I really like this one. It just looks really yummy. There's something about this color. Mm, love it. And that's it. This is our complete makeup look. I went through all of my favorite products from Chanel. As much as I love the way this look came out and I recreated a look that I used during my last Chanel haul, I was testing out all of these products together during that video. I will link it down below in case you'd like to check out the makeup from that day. But this is basically the same exact makeup look, all of the products that I used that day, so I knew it would come together nicely. But if you don't really like this makeup look or you don't really like the sound of one or two of these products, doesn't matter. Throw that one out and go to the next one. This is best of the brand right here. I almost forgot I have one more product. This is sort of an honorable mention. It's the Chanel CC Cream. I think I've talked about this in my last few favorites videos as well. And it deserves a place on the list because this is just a super product. It does so many great things for your skin. So the CC Cream, now I believe it comes in maybe seven different shades. They keep expanding the shade range. It's still not a lot, but it's not intended to be a match for match foundation. You just go with the shade that is closest to your skin tone. It has SPF 50. It has Moringa Plum Extract, which is chock full of vitamin C. It also has hyaluronic acid, so it's going to protect against sun damage, hydrate your skin, and it's going to help with radiance. And it has pigment, so it helps to even out your complexion. You can use this as a tinted moisturizer at, on a light foundation day, but you can also use this as a primer. In fact, that's the way I like to use it because that way I'm getting a little SPF 50. Before I sat down to film today when I was creating my list of products, I referenced my original videos because I've done this best of the brand, top 10 makeup must-haves videos twice before. A lot of the products are the same because these are just the tried and true best of the brand products, but there are two products that I have mentioned before that do not make the list this time around, and it is worth mentioning. The first one is the iconic iQuad. I've talked about this before as a best of the brand product, and this is kind of a tough one because it still is one of the iconic pieces from, from Chanel. If you are starting to get into Chanel makeup for the very first time, it's going to be very tempting to pick up an eyeshadow quad. Of course, you can do your makeup and create special looks with it. Even my favorite eyeshadow quad from Chanel, this is Warm Memories, is great, but it's not as good as some of the other premium eyeshadows 
eyeshadow formulas that are on the market. It's just not. And I think that's a harsh reality that I've had to face recently. In 2020, I experimented with a lot of brands that I hadn't tried before. Natasha Denona, Pat McGrath. Not to say those brands are on the same level of luxury as Chanel because of course they aren't. But I've just tried so many different eyeshadows that even Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows, I find them easier to work with, more buttery, more pigmented. When I go to do my makeup, I grab so many different brands other than Chanel. I would still recommend Chanel eyeshadows. I'm not saying they're bad, they're not bad. But if I had to choose a top 10 list best of the brand, I wouldn't start here. And the second product that got chopped off the list pains me. It pains me so much because the original is amazing. If they had kept the original, it would make the best of the brand list every single time. And yes, I am talking about the Soleil Tan de Chanel. I still have a lot left and this bronzer will last you an entire year. So I probably have a year's worth of bronzer here. I'm gonna have to savor it, really make it last. So this is the original formula really amazing. And then I have the new Play Beige Bronzing Cream. So when I initially reviewed this product, I said it's basically the same as the Soleil Tan. I don't know why everybody's upset. The color's the same, the texture's the same, it looks the same. Of course there are people out there who will say, no, it's different. It looks completely different. What are you talking about? As if there was such a huge noticeable difference between the size. You can have that opinion if you want to. I disagree, I think they are, were so close. Now here's the problem, I purchased this as soon as it launched. I went to use this just the other day. Rubby rubby, do you see me rubbing? <laughs> I am really getting in there. And look, what happened here? This new formula does not last the same way. Now I knew going in that this was more of a natural formula, so the shelf life is a little bit less. You really have to get this product and use it immediately. Maybe this it's the swatch. Maybe if I tried to apply it to the skin with a brush, I wouldn't have an issue. It feels really smooth. It feels like, yeah, okay, it's not hard. My finger's gliding around in there, but when I look, huh. Nothing, barely anything. I don't know if whatever oil or base, whatever the main ingredient, if it's kind of created this seal. I don't know if I need to warm it up and just keep working at it. Nothing, a little something. Not a lot of product there. So now let's do the swatch test. Here is the Le Beige. Now I'm going to swatch the Soleil Tan. Same thing, going in rather aggressively. I did two coats on the bottom, but it is so much more sheer and shiny. I don't think it stays good as long. This looks opaque on the skin, I can still see my skin, this looks more sheer to me. It took a full year, I think it's been a, at least a year, probably close to a year, to really notice the difference. It's so sad. I need to try this on the face. I've just, I'm making this judgment based off of swatching it. I pulled this out to use just the other day and as I rubbed around and nothing was coming off my finger, I kind of freaked out. And then I went right back into my Soleil Tan de Chanel and it was perfect. That completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found it helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I want to hear from you guys. What are your favorite products from Chanel? You can leave your favorite products, your least favorite products. I want to hear it all down in the comment section. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down in the description box. That's for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.